With warm temperatures and summer vacations in full swing, it's important, of course, to talk about protecting yourself from the sun. So I'm joined now by Lexi Lubsack, a journalist who recently wrote a pretty fascinating article for Bustle about some sunscreen myths that you may or may not have heard of, including some ways your favorite sunscreens might actually be harming the environment. Lexi, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So what are some of the ways that some sunscreens actually impact the environment and ways consumers might not know. So this awareness that sunscreen could potentially be damaging reefs and marine life um, started, you know, many years ago. And one of the things that consumers often look for is this marketing jargon on sunscreens that says reef safe. So, so far there have been two ingredients that have been banned, oxybenzone and octinoxate. And those were banned because we know that they cause bleaching on coral reefs. So even just one little drop in an Olympic sized swimming pool can cause damage to reefs. You know, if you go abroad, there's often so many options for sun protection that we don't see here. But you, you talk about that in the U.S. it's still kind of lagging behind in that way. So what are some of the regulations and, and how does that play into the items that we see in the U.S. here when it comes to purchasing sun care items? Yeah, it's really interesting. There's only a small list of um, what we call filters, so active ingredients that block the sun. So there's a very small list of filters that we're allowed to use in the U.S., and that's because the FDA regulates sunscreens in our country. So they're treated like drugs, which makes it incredibly difficult to bring in other ingredients to help protect against the sun, even though in places like um, France and Australia, there's an entire laundry list of ingredients that are going into sunscreens there that we don't actually have any access to. So luckily, uh, because a lot of consumer outrage has happened around this topic, the FDA is now um, has a small group of scientists and researchers who are looking into new sunscreen ingredients, and we could have some pretty big changes to the sun care market in the coming years. You also mentioned in your piece, and this was, I think, so fascinating for me because I didn't know this exists. There's this entire counterfeit sunscreen market kind of going off that topic of, you know, items that are regulated or not. Can you talk about, you know, what that looks like? Because it's something I think a lot of people have never heard of. And then what are some of the signs that these consumers should look out for to make sure that their sunscreen that they're purchasing is actually real? Now that we know that people are looking on marketplace sites, they're looking on e-commerce sites from overseas to buy some of these sunscreen filters that we simply can't get here yet because of regulation from the FDA. There are counterfeiters who are making sunscreens that will not protect you and they're totally fake. And so one of the best tips I got from one of my sources in this article is that if you are going to buy a sunscreen from an overseas site, definitely ask for a retail certificate. And that will basically help to kind of weed out anyone selling fake stuff. Um, you know, it can help protect you. Um, but again, I would be very, very, very careful with where you're buying your sunscreens because, you know, even if a sunscreen is a drugstore product, even if it's very cheap, even if they're selling it for just a few dollars, it could be fake. When purchasing sunscreen products and sun care products now during the summer, what are some of the things that consumers should look for? So experts, dermatologists, they want you to put on a thick layer of sunscreen, especially on your face when you're going out in the sun, because that's often what's um, exposed to the sun. The mineral only formulas tend to be thought of still with all this new research as some of the best for not only us, but also for the environment. We appreciate the time, Lexi. Thank you so much.